how's it going folks? Welcome to Found Flicks. On this Indian Explained, we're looking at Z. Just Z. Where a couple noticed their young son has been spending a lot of time lately playing with a new imaginary friend named, yep, you guessed it, Z. What at first seems like a harmless relationship quickly turns into something destructive and dangerous. This is really at its core about the idea that all kids have imaginary friends, but what if it is causing them to do bad and violent things? Z is more of a lingering dread kind of atmosphere sort of thing as her mother starts growing increasingly distraught at her boy's behavior. And the question becomes, is it him or his new friend behind all these strange occurrences? It has a good amount of classic jump scares as well that are quite effective, and at points almost feels more like a fantasy rather than being strictly horror, but I think it works for the subject matter. To me, things get more interesting when we learn about a deeper connection that ties Z to the child's mother, learning that the entity is much more than simply an imaginary friend. It also has some amusing casting, from a horror trivia POV at least, led by Keegan Connor Tracy from Final Destination 2, and her husband, played by Sean Rogerson from the Grave Encounter films, this also being co-written by Colin Minahan behind both of those. There's also the ending that feels strangely concrete, but also inconclusive at the same time. We're not sure exactly where we leave things, especially in regards to the titular Z. And guess what? I've got thoughts on what it all means. So let's check out Z breaking down the story, as well as what Z's whole deal really is about, and explaining the ending and what it means. We open on young Josh, playing all by himself with his mini toys, staring at a bouncy ball with a magnifying glass, apparently trying to understand just how is it so bouncy. He's got a train set, tons of figures, man this kid's got a pretty sweet setup here. Playtime is over when his mom Beth calls him down for breakfast. The family appears close, asking if he did his homework, Kevin chortling, oh he always does. He gives Beth a kiss and pounds it out with Josh, grabbing some toast for the road. Ha! <laughs> domestic bliss. Sure hope nothing causes it to go awry. Another kid, Daniel's mom, drives him to school, and it appears that Josh is a bit awkward or quiet. When the teacher poses the question to the class, how many muffins are we going to eat? Everyone's hand shoots up sans Josh, busy scribbling away in a notebook. Later relaxing on the couch, Beth overhears Josh speaking to someone. He's definitely carrying on a whole conversation with someone else there, thinking that he has an imaginary friend. Kevin finds it cute, but she's not so sure, shrugging, I guess. In bed, he has a routine of doing nighty nights for everyone, including his pet, and asks his mom to leave the door open. Beth visits her ailing mother, getting a text that her sister isn't coming to her frustration. Mom immediately asks where she is, fibbing that she's on her way. She stares off dreamily, going on that she saw her father, and he looked just as she remembered, and could even smell his cologne. Beth gingerly takes her hand, but mom immediately pulls it away, upsetting her. Not sure what that's all about, but there is obviously some lingering familial issues here. Tidying up Josh's room, Chewie's cage catches her eye, and after knocking on it to no response, realizes he's dead. The parents play along with Josh's new friend, even putting out a slice of pizza for him. Dad asks his name, but according to the boy, he doesn't want to say. He goes over and whispers into his ear, replying, okay, sounds good. He busts out a crayon and scrawls only the letter Z, sliding it over. Just Z, huh? Kevin tells him, nice to meet you, and Z politely tells him the same back. Hey, maybe he's nice after all. Bringing up some laundry, Josh is in the middle of an intense round of the floor is lava, screaming for her to be careful, but she's not feeling it, ordering him to bed. Josh calls for Z to tag along and yanks a pillow away, yelling triumphantly, you're stuck, Z. Got him. Doing his nighty nights, he still includes Chewy, Ben asking if he's sure that he should be saying goodnight to him. The boy innocently tells her just because he's dead doesn't mean that he can't hear me. <laughs> okay, sure. She leaves the door open as usual, but this time, he asks her to close it, as Z prefers the dark. She attempts to broach the subject of Z with Kevin, but he's not taking it very seriously, believing that he'll just grow out of it. Strangely, Josh waits outside for his carpool as usual, but Daniel's mom never shows. It seems that Josh has been misbehaving lately at school and gets suspended indefinitely, although the teacher says he's one of her favorite students. Beth is in disbelief, asking what he did, rattling off things like speaking curse words and hitting other kids. She still can't believe it, but the teacher has sent a stack of red cards home for his various offenses, showing that they were all signed by Kevin.
Kevin. Oh, trying to keep secrets, Kevin. Never good. She's pissed that he hid this from her, and he only lamely apologizes, saying, oh, kids just get in trouble sometimes. It's more than just a little grievance to her, though, sarcastically telling him, well, great job on the parenting, because he's suspended now. Apparently, Josh refuses to take any responsibility for anything, blaming it entirely on Z. They naturally send him to his shrink, Dr. Seeger, who informs him that imaginary friends can come from any places, such as boredom or a means of acting out. Beth suggests they get him on some meds, but Kevin is offended at the idea. The doc doesn't believe it's necessary either, as it's perfectly normal for kids his age, and imaginary friends can actually be a positive thing. Well, at least how about how to make him less destructive? Doc's suggesting that they play with him more and act like his friend, all to help Josh feel all right to be himself around real people. Getting ready to leave, it seems the doc has a previous connection with Beth, telling her that it's good to see her again despite the circumstances. Josh runs by them, shouting, come on Z, and Doc's eyebrows raise in curiosity. He asks Z, Beth muttering, oh, that's what he calls him. Seeger looking more concerned, as though he's heard that name before. That night, Beth is startled awake to what sounds like footsteps and goes to Josh's room, finding the bed empty. A banging rings out from downstairs, startled by Josh there, clutching a massive knife, casually telling her he's making Z a sandwich. And he doesn't like the crust. She is fed up, ushering him to bed, despite his wanting to finish up. Z's hungry, he complains, and we see that it at least didn't go to waste, the sandwich appearing eaten overnight. Well, except for the crust, that is. Today's a big day for Joshy, putting Seeker's plan into action with a day at the play zone. Hmm, sounds pretty good. Kevin reminds her to be the friend that he needs, and he's off to work. The place does look like an absolute blast, them shooting cannons at each other, Josh kicking his mom's butt. He wants to go on the mythical big slide, but she's already exhausted and refuses to go. He runs off into the tubes and tunnels and slams on the window, telling her to come and play crawling off. Right after he leaves the view, she glimpses someone or something on his tail to her horror, finding him appearing to be passed out, but it's all just a big joke. Laughing in her face, I got you, a ah, classic. At dinner, there's some spaghetti out for Z, Josh asking Beth to get them some milk. Kevin and him discuss their time at the play zone, and when Beth comes back in, Josh corrects her to get the 2% lady. Kevin jokingly asks Z to have his garlic bread, but mom isn't so happy-go-lucky about it, looking sullen as she dutifully doles out milk for the lad and his friend. She tries to discuss things again with Kevin, bringing up what she saw in the tunnel. He goes on to detail his own encounter, swearing that he saw something and really hams it up. She buys into it whole hog, asking, really? And he can't keep a straight face anymore, chiding her that Z isn't real and chuckling to grow up. She's not amused whatsoever, stomping off in a huff. Thanks for the help, Kev. Jeez. Sometime in between visits, her mom passed, all alone, which is kind of depressing. At least this time, her sister Jenna bothers to show up, asking how she looks. The same, but deader, Beth deadpans, both awkwardly laughing. She tells her to go see her, but she's squeamish about dead bodies. She is our mom, Beth encourages her, and Jenna gathers herself to get to her feet. Beth is drawn to a photo of what must be her parents on the wall. Then an odd melodic tone beeps, followed by a mechanical voice uttering, Z. She's lured downstairs and finds an old speak and spell kind of thing under the bed. Jenna comes back in, admitting that she couldn't do it and just wants to go now. Still hoping to get Joshy some pals, unfortunately word of mouth has spread about his bad behavior, making her way down a whole long list of kids she gets turned down by everyone, looking like her son is going to be stuck with Z for the long haul. Out of desperation, she shows up at Daniel's mom's house, who is at least cordial. That is until Josh asks for his pal, and she looks worried, trying to stop him, but he's already off to find him. She apologizes for reacting that way, but Daniel said that he was talking about hurting animals and other concerning topics. Beth still can't believe that her son would say anything like that, but all she knows is that Daniel came home crying, and she she needs to protect her son. Right on cue, a body is hurled down the stairs, bonking on the railing on the way down. Ouch, a roo! And of course, the obvious suspect is Josh, staring down ominously from the top floor. Daniel is wheeled off in an ambulance, and Beth tries to tell his mom that she's sorry, but it's way too late for that, yelling to get out of my life for good. Well, can't really blame you there. The outlook is not good. Kevin getting a call from Daniel's parents, and they've hit a wall, unsure of how to help Josh at this point. Beth devises a sneaky plan. When fixing their sandwiches, she grinds up some prescription meds into his glass of milk. She calls him down, but he doesn't come bounding down as usual, finding him staring blankly at his wall. He sketched a massive drawing of a creature on the wall, asking if she likes it. It's Z! 
She tells him to eat up, Josh insisting that he's not hungry. Well, at least drink your milk, she coos. It seems that Z has instructed him not to, and she tries to show him that it's fine drinking some herself, and he cautiously takes a drink, glaring at her suspiciously. This dinner is a bit more off than before. Josh off in La La Land with an empty plate, the parents giving each other concerned glances. The sisters pay another visit to their moms to sort through her old belongings, Jenna immediately noticing something is up with Josh, staring dead-eyed at cartoons on the floor. They find a box full of old mementos, including an unmarked VHS tape. When they bring more stuff upstairs, Josh has mysteriously disappeared, now static on the TV. She scours the house for him, coming to a closed door. He's on the other side, and it seems that she doesn't want him to be in the room, chiding him for doing so, and ordering him to never come in here again. The boy seemingly entranced with the fan blades. Alone later, she pops the tape in, and it's her little sister's birthday from many years ago. Beth is seen off by herself at her dollhouse, her dad having to beckon her several times before she finally gets a move on. When skipping away, she calls for Z to tag along. Oh, damn! This adds another layer to her situation, but because it's not just Josh making up Z, but she too had the same childhood imaginary friend. So it's really her that brought it here in the first place, but she doesn't seem to remember. She is unsure of what it is that she heard, and to really confirm it, she rewinds back over the same spot. Come on, Z! She's shaken to the core, and immediately torches the tape in the fireplace. There's a distant crackling and a tortured scream. She turns quickly to the source, staring deep into the dark woods in horror. Sometime later, Kevin gets to work covering up the Z mural, grunting at least he's not playing with him anymore. Hmm, maybe he found someone else to play with. Josh isn't doing so well. At dinner, he's kind of wobbling and vomits, and keeps tossing his cookies. She's worried it's a reaction to his meds, and Kevin overhears this, only learning now what she did. He's understandably upset about her keeping the secret, and still maintains Josh's innocence. She argues that he's not around, and doesn't see what she does. I mean, he threw a kid off a balcony for crap's sakes. But according to Josh, he didn't do it. Oh sure, just blindly trust a kid, that makes sense. Things inevitably come to a head, dredging up about those red cards, but he stops things from getting even messier. This isn't about us, it's about him. Laying with Josh and singing him a lullaby, the speak and spell calls out to her. It appears to stop when she picks it up, yet when about to leave, it speaks her name, then back to chanting Z. Imagine Z, it spells out, getting faster and faster. Beth gasping when she figures out what it said. After pouring over the message into the morning, she draws herself a nice relaxing bath with a shitload of candles. She whispers to herself, imagine Z, and a wind picks up blowing past a candle, and then they start all blowing out. There's a loud splash in the tub right in front of her, and she whimpers at what could be there. She peers over, and the creature is right there in the tub with her! And Kevin comes in, flipping on the lights, everything appearing back to normal. He cradles her to calm her down, her still sobbing that Z is real, pleading to trust her. He was my friend too, now starting to remember what she must have blocked out for all these years. Going through more of her mom's boxes, she comes across a drunk and emotional Jenna, feeling guilty for not saying goodbye. She goes to grab her bottle of liquor, and Beth tugs it away from her grasp, promising we'll sort it all out. At least we still have each other, right? She drunkenly passes out, Beth spotting Z plus Beth, forever carved into the headboard. It's time for the nighty-night ritual, but Josh huffs that he doesn't want to do them, knowing what's up. You saw Z, didn't you? Well, he saw you too, seemingly jealous of his mom taking his BFF. Certain that she must be losing her marbles, she calls Seeger to make herself an appointment. And he too knows exactly what's going on here, the same thing as when she was a child, revealing that she was a patient of his, and again she seems to not remember this occurring. Her parents brought her around Josh's age, begging for help. Her father, in particular, was terrified. He recalls her friend was unlike anything he's ever encountered. Dangerous, destructive, and obsessive. At one point, her father suddenly stopped bringing her in, so he assumed that she grew out of it, gravely stating he had no idea what had transpired. Well, what does that mean? He pulls out an old tape from her childhood session, panning over to an empty chair, apparently, for Z. Just as with Josh, it sounds like Z is actually telling Beth things to influence her. Like, Daddy doesn't love you, and that she doesn't need no school. Seeger inquires what happens when she outgrows him, as all children do. And they have a surprising plan, it turns out. Z is going to find her when she's older, and they'll get married and have lots of babies. This all meaning he's been waiting for Beth all these years, and is actually using her son as a way to reconnect with her, and it is indeed her that it truly wants. She tries to call Kevin to warn him, but he's drawn away by thuds just missing her call. She's barreling down the road, and continues trying to get through. He checks on Josh, seeing him fast asleep, and tucks him 
Ronan, telling him he loves him. He sees the drawing has somehow returned, groaning, Josh. The speak and spell tells him hello, then blinks away when he picks it up, chuckling to himself in confusion. Then all kinds of toys and lights come alive at once, whirring and blinking, focusing back in on the drawing. The eyes glow for a moment. Then we see the teethy visage of Z in a flash. Beth makes it home to the upstairs engulfed in flames. She finds Kevin dead, blood all over him. Z wants to play, written in it on the wall. She spins over to Josh, screaming that he's scared in a doorway. The glowing eyes appear behind him and he snatched away the door's slamming closed. She attempts to grab the handles, burning her hands, and slams into it to no effect. She falls to her knees, hopeless, offering herself to Z. I'll be yours if you let him go. The door creaks open, inviting her in, and she's able to get the boy outside to safety. No such luck on the house, the whole thing now completely on fire. Dang, that Z is a stone cold jerk, all just to get Beth for himself. She drops off Josh at her sister's, but she's like, I'm not sure you should trust me to take care of a kid. She authoritatively states that there is no other choice. You're all I have left but promises that it should be for only a little while and forks over some cash to clean herself up. If not for me, for him, she asks, holding back tears. She begrudgingly returns to her family's abode to more or less play house with Z, about to turn the key. The door opens, beckoning her inside. She chants, imagine Z to herself again, and he makes his presence known. The lights buzz, then blink off completely, red eyes appearing in the dark, just as Z likes it. They play a game of hide and seek, following creaking floorboards and bangs to track him down. In one room, she sees a partially open door and runs up to it, flinging it open. Laughing, I found you. She sets out milk and sandwiches for the two of them, but he's not happy, roaring and banging on the table. Whoops, forgot the 2%, my bad Z. He gurgles down gratefully, and then is heard munching on the Sammy. She sits down right in front of the TV, watching cartoons, and their little bubble is intruded upon by a surprise visit from Seeger. Hearing Z moving around inside, he asks if someone is in there with her, but she lies that she's all alone. He asks to come in, and she tries to kick him out, but he literally sticks his foot in the door, pleading that he can help her. He says he knows what's going on here, and that he is here with him. He asks the bigger question, is that what you want, to be with him? She gives a half-hearted nod, Z appearing and scaring her when he stands up. She screams, crying for him to go, and they share a final back and forth through the door. He reminds her that she created Z, still believing that this is all in her mind, and thusly, she is the only one that can stop it. She breaks down into a puddle of tears, but quickly pulls herself together at the sink, reassuring herself that this isn't real. The door handle angrily jostles, her heaving out to Z, I'll be in out in a minute, showing that really his behavior is quite similar to that of a child too. She proceeds to board up the windows and doors, leaving her no way in or out, and also hopefully keeping Z away from her boy. She longingly swipes through pictures of Josh, as well as the family in happier times. Hearing Z's footsteps approaching, she quickly hides it away, and he noises easily crawls into bed right behind her. It appears that Z found her phone later and was not happy about it, her finding it destroyed on the table in the morning. She calls out in frustration, what do you want from me? They spend the night playing another game of hide and seek, but she's not as enthused, moaning, it's late, do we have to keep playing? A door opens, guiding her where to go. She swings it open, the beam passing over a hanging man, which based on the photo was her dad, leaving her heaving and terrified. It's never explicitly stated what all went down with Z and Beth when she was a kid, but based on the tidbits we are given, like what Seeger mentioned, that thing that happened, it seems that due to the stress caused by Z and Beth, that her dad ended up taking his own life, or in a way it was really Z responsible, similar to how we saw things turn out with Kevin. And this would explain the coldness from her mom as well, in a way still blaming Beth for her husband's death. She wakes up the next morning to Z wanting to take their relationship to the next level, her mother's wedding dress hanging out on the door. She it. Here comes the bride playing, making her way across a path of petals laid out on the carpet. She follows it to the living room, a tape of what looks like her parents' wedding playing. What better way to celebrate their union than a good old game of the floor is lava? She pulls a trick inspired by Josh earlier, snatching the pillow away and trapping Z from getting any further. She takes the chance to run to the phone and calls her sister. But within seconds, Z is already getting antsy. She has to put the boy on, telling him through tears that she's gonna see him soon. He's quite cold and doesn't 
doesn't seem to care at all, seething, you stole my friend, and hangs up on her. She rushes back, seeing that Z has made his own path down the stairs, several more pillows laid out, her muttering, oh shit. She hears wood crunching and discovers the front door's barricade removed, it now wide open. Z must have figured out that she really wasn't wanting to be with him, so now he is angrily seeking out Josh to punish her. She frantically calls her sister to get Josh out of there, but she's not really listening, saying that he's fine. Yet when walking by the other room, he's gone. Oops. She searches the house, coming to the open back door, and looks around the remote landscape, seeing no sign of him. With the worst timing ever, Sika returns with the cops in tow, one catching her eye outside before she ducks out of view. Jenna searches an old industrial complex, finding Josh there playing on the train tracks with Z. Well, that's probably not too safe. She turns, seeing a train fast approaching, and sprints to him just outrunning it. The doc calls to Beth, asking if Z is in there too, reminding her that it's all in her mind and only she can stop it. A new wave of understanding washes over her face, her knowing now what to do. The train is now just fade away from the clueless boy, who finally turns back dumbfounded, just as the cops bust open the door. And upstairs, they come to find a hanging Beth in the same spot that she saw her father earlier. The line's still on, Jenna shouts out that she was able to get Josh just in the nick of time, him weakly saying, Mommy. We pick up some time later at the dinner table. Josh is there along with Beth that must have survived her hanging attempt, but there does appear to be serious lingering side effects. Her just kind of staring off and has to be fed by Jenna. So yeah, not really a full recovery there. Later, Jenna tucks in Josh to get some sleep, the boy asking if he can do his nighty nights. She tells him not tonight and leaves the door open. He does them anyway, telling his mommy and daddy goodnight and then finally, good night Z. This final moment leaving us wondering, is he really gone or perhaps not? Now we don't really get much more conclusively after the train rescue to determine anything one way or another, but at least in my interpretation, and thanks to a couple hints there, it seems that to me, Z is really gone, at least for now. First, we were back to the previous nighty night to his dead pet Chewy. Even at the end, he says good night to his dad as well. So just because he mentions Z too, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's actually alive or around. As he said, just because he's dead, you can still say hi to him, right? Then there's a few more things related to Josh's demeanor at the end versus when he was under Z's influence. At dinner at the end, we see he has his own plate of food instead of refusing to eat anything but peanut butter sandwiches. And then when Jenna tells him goodnight, she keeps the door open instead of as with Z, he wanted it closed because he prefers the dark. This says to me that at least at the moment, he is not under Z's influence. The question then becomes what exactly did happen there with the hanging? We understand Understand that she actually created Z when she was a child and believe that she alone had the power to stop it. It makes total sense to me if she had actually died that Z would be gone for good too, as they are both connected at least in some sense. Her surviving does kind of muddy this, but she is not in great shape after either. Perhaps at least whatever physical and mental damage she suffered has caused her to effectively forget about Z again. I think the real point is that it's trying to make is just how much she is willing to do for the safety of her son even giving her own life for his to keep Z from tormenting him further. So at least she does survive, I guess. And hey, it looks like her sister did get her shit sorted too, and is now kind of the new head of the family, taking her newfound responsibilities head on. Good for you, sis. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of this ending explained for Z. And don't forget, before we go, you can send me requests for any movies or TV shows that you'd like to see me explain by sending them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix. What did you guys think of Z and its ending? Do you think Z is still around in the end or not? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Foundflix. See you next time.